PFSense is a free and open source firewall, very full featured, very nice to use, relatively intuitive for a firewall. And I really recommend downloading it, playing around with it, seeing if it would work for you. A lot of people do use it in a production environment and I mention it's free, so that's kind of nice. Uh, when you look at certain other vendors firewall offerings and the price tags associated with them so i want to in this video show you how to install uh, pfsense in a virtual box environment so we're going to virtualize this and the two things that you would need to do for a virtual firewall instance pfsense or anything else is you need the firewall installation image which you can download from, in this case, pfsense.org slash download. And you also need something to virtualize with, which we're going to use VirtualBox. You could use anything that you prefer. Uh, the configuration, the interface might look somewhat different, but the the broad strokes, it, it's pretty similar uh, beyond the, the sort of surface level differences. So with your, you download your virtualization platform, install that, and then you download your pfsense image. And we'll just assume that you've done that already. And with that done, let me quickly start up Windows 8 because we're going to need that in a bit. But we also need to create a new virtual machine. So I'm going to click New. And I'm going to name this virtual machine PFSense. It's going to be a BSD virtual machine. So in this drop down, which might be kind of hard to see, uh, I'm going to select BSD. And FreeBSD 64 bit is what we are interested in here. So with that selected, I'll click create and create. And then our virtual machine, at least the bones of it is actually created. Next thing we need to do is go to settings for this virtual machine. And we'll just kind of go down the list here. If you go to system processor, you can assign additional cores to the virtual firewall if you'd like to. And I usually like to stick with two. So I'm going to select two for the display. You can kind of leave that as is for storage. You want to select this uh, disk icon here that says empty by default. And if you go over to the other disk icon and click that, you can actually create a new virtual optical disk. And from this menu, if you just download the ISO and just installed VirtualBox, you can click add and browse to the ISO and then basically make that eligible to be mounted in this virtual machine. So we've kind of created this PFSense virtual DVD and we're going to insert it in the virtual DVD drive of this VM. So we'll choose this and now it says PFSense here. So we've got PFSense in our CD drive. Uh, next thing, audio. You can disable audio. And actually the same goes for USB. I'm going to disable that. We're not going to be using that for a firewall virtual machine. Uh, and we need to have, well, let's say two interfaces or more. But two is kind of the minimum when you're working with a firewall. So we're going to use the uh, the first interface. We're going to set that to uh, INT Net, just an internal network that only VMs in VirtualBox that are connected to INT Net or internal net uh, can access. So that's going to be our internal network that we're actually going to access from Windows 8 over here, which is also on the internal network. And one thing I like to do is actually change the MAC address. Uh, so I like to use AA as the last portion of the MAC address for internal networks and then FF for external networks. A uh, reason being you have to identify the, the network adapters according to their MAC addresses. So if you define them in a way that you can recognize, it will just sort of make life easier. So we're going to use NAT for this and it's going to be FF and we've got AA for our internal network. NAT's going to be really the WAN side, the sort of public facing side of the firewall. And with the, all that configured, we'll click OK. And let me just make sure that everything looks good. Yeah, everything looks fine. So now we can actually start this up. Let me close out of these warnings here because they're just going to bother me. And it's, um, it's asking for the disk. Sometimes it will do that, even though we already specified the disk. It's just VirtualBox. So I'm going to select PFSense, click Start, and it's going to load up the installer really quickly. So we'll get the installation going. And it's actually very quick, by the way. With, uh, with PFSense, it's small. It's a very small operating system. So it, uh, it doesn't take long to boot, and it also doesn't take long to install. 
which is kind of nice. So let me switch this to uh, scale mode so we can make this a bit larger. That probably looks a bit better. Scaling is not 100%, but it'll work. So you kind of just click enter. There's a little wizard. You want to install PS Sense. Uh, if you speak English, you just can continue with the default key map. If you speak a different language, you might need to select the language uh, that is your primary tongue, but we'll click enter here. And once again, enter. So we're just gonna use the default partitioning scheme. And it's a very, like I said, very quick install. So this will kind of think for a bit, 2%. It's going to quickly run through the, the copying of files over to the, the new virtual disk that we created with the virtual machine. And we're done. So it's now finished. Uh, you can click yes if you wanna do something more advanced, but most people don't need to do that. So we'll just press enter and we are going to reboot. So one thing we need to do is make sure that the disk is removed. So hopefully it is, we'll see momentarily if it's actually been removed or not. Okay. And it has not. So thanks for that virtual box. Uh, so what we're gonna do is let's just shut down the machine really quickly. We're just gonna power it off completely. Do not show that message again. And let's go to settings and you may run into this. It, I've run into inconsistent behavior as far as, um, as far as how optical disks or ISO images are handled with VirtualBox. But uh, you can just remove the disk in the settings if you defined it there and then click start again. And now we should actually boot from the hard drive. Knock on wood. We'll see. All right, that's promising because we're still booting into PFSense, but this time we don't have that CD in there. So hopefully we aren't gonna boot into an installer. That'd be really weird since there is no installer in the CD-ROM drive. And then once the, um, the boot up process is done, we have a few more configurations that we have to go through. And at that point, once, uh, once we've done the basic configurations, we can actually open the web interface and navigate to PFSense. So what I've got is a, another virtual machine that's connected to that internal network that we're gonna use as sort of our virtual LAN. And if I log in here, first thing I wanna point out after it finishes logging in is we are connected to a network. It's kind of behind me right now. Let me move to the other side. So we're connected to a network, but there's no internet access. We get the yellow triangle. Reason being, we're connected to a network with no internet access currently. Uh, so that is something that we will hopefully change once we get PFSense up and running. So going back over to the right side, while we're kind of waiting for PFSense to think for a bit, let's actually check on it. Yeah, it's still thinking. We could do, in Windows, we, we could go to the command prompt, do an IP config slash A, and my, my guess, unless I've statically configured the IP address previously, is that we, slash all, um, is that we will have a, yeah, an APIPA address, right? So we see this 169.254. That's because this, this uh, virtual machine is attempting to reach out to a DHCP server, but there's nothing currently on that network to serve that role. So that should change uh, once we get PFSense up and running. And we should even be able to just navigate uh, to the internet, browse the internet and so forth. So it's finished thinking here, which is always nice. And we've got, we've got two addresses. Uh, one of them is our WAN uh, interface. One of them is our LAN interface. And on the WAN side, we should have DHCP enabled uh, for that. But let's, let's make sure that our interfaces are assigned correctly and then we'll kind of go from there. So what you need to do to make sure that your WAN, LAN, and so forth interfaces are actually mapping to the correct ports is go to option one. 
and we don't need to set up VLANs now, so we're going to enter no or N. And the WAN interface we said was going to be EM1. So that's the FF, right? Yes. So that's why we specified the MAC address. So it's going to be EM1. And we are going to um, use EM0 for the LAN interface. That's the AA. And hopefully, I've remembered that correctly. So we could even double check just to make sure, go back to, uh, to VirtualBox, kind of look at these adapters. So we've got adapter one is internal network. So you can go to properties or settings actually for that virtual machine, go to your, your network. And let's see, our internal network was AA. And I think I got that right, right? Right? Uh, AA, uh, we can't see it anymore. I think I got that right. And it's kind of promising that our virtual machine over here is suddenly det detecting a network. So that's something that is a good sign. So let's see, we'll click uh, yes. We want to make things discoverable because it really doesn't matter. I'm going to destroy this virtual machine momentarily. So we'll click yes. And let's uh, go back over to PFSense. Yeah, so it looks like we've managed to, on the WAN side, we got an IP address 10.0.3.15. On the LAN side, we've got an IP address uh, that we'll use as our default gateway. And we should even have DHCP up and running by default, if I remember correctly. So I think everything's actually good to go. If you need to set IP addresses manually, you can use option two here, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be necessary for us. So let's um, close, yeah, we'll close this down. And it doesn't look like we've got an IP address yet, but if I do IP config, uh, slash renew or let's do a release and then renew. Let's see if it's uh, even got a, a DHCP server up and running by default. And it looks like it does. So here's our IPv4 address 192.168.1.100. So PFSense has that DHCP server running by default. With all that done, now we can actually open the web interface. And I'm not going to use Internet Explorer, unless I have no other option, which I guess I don't. I don't even have Edge. So my options are pretty limited here. So I guess we're going with Internet Explorer. <laughs> ugh. It's just, ugh. Anyway, we'll, uh, we're not going to dwell on that. No, I don't want to. Windows 8, thank you. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I wish this would go away. Come on, go away. This is Windows 8, right? This is such, this is so Windows 8. Come on. Okay, I don't, thank you for, okay, so it's just going to continue to bug me, but I don't want it to get in the way, but of course, God, go away. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, I'm not gonna get too frustrated with Windows 8, but it is sort of, it is what it is. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go to HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash and then the IP address of your uh, PFSense box. So in this case, it's going to be 192.168. Uh, what was it? 1.1. And yeah, there's going to be a problem with the certificate because it's using a self-signed certificate that your browser doesn't trust by default. That's fine. That's expected. So we're going to continue to the website. And now we've got this logon page. So the logon, the default login credentials are admin and pfsense. And it's going to basically open a wizard that we can use to, to finish the configuration, to really get a baseline configuration up and running. So we'll click next, click next, and we can give it a host name. We can specify the name of our domain. You might need to specify a DNS server. So we're gonna use uh, Cloudflare's and Google's DNS server. And we'll click next. I'm just gonna use the default NTP server, but you might want to use, you know, the NTP server of your choice. And I, I don't even know if they've got America slash yeah, they do. So America slash Phoenix, that's my time zone. Yours, of course, and just enter what your time zone is. Click next. And let's see, WAN interface. That's going to already be configured. So it's using DHCP currently, and we're just gonna leave the, the WAN interface as is. 
Uh, the default settings will already block certain types of potentially malicious traffic. So we'll leave that as is. Our LAN IP address, we're gonna leave that as is because it works for us. And then our admin password. You definitely don't wanna use the default password on any networking device, including a PFSense box. So I'm just gonna enter a new password, which is not a great password. It's just the name of my cat, but uh, it's a lab environment. So I think we can live with that. So you enter your password for the administrator, reload the firewall, and then once that's done, uh, you should be able to start messing around with it. So you can check for updates. We're not gonna do that now, but I recommend, of course, making sure that it's up to date. And with all that set up, now we could go into, for instance, our interfaces, configure individual interfaces. Uh, we might need to log back in, actually. Uh, but we can also go to our firewall and configure NAT or, or firewall rules. And let's make sure, yeah. Okay, so we're still logged in. So we can go to our firewall, look at NAT, right? So it, it supports all kinds of network address translation types. Um, we can specify firewall rules. We can set up even VPN access. So remote VPN access can be set up with IPsec, with OpenVPN. Uh, there's various other services that you, and this, this list might even expand if you go and install extensions. So there's, there's a lot you can do with this. And I really recommend not so much watching me poke around, but just poking around in PFSense yourself because it's a really cool technology and it's kind of amazing what all you can do with it. So I'm gonna end on just showing you the package manager. So if we go to the package manager, no packages are currently installed, but if we go to available packages, it's not going to let us see them. Okay, come on. We've got internet access, so maybe we need to like run an update, something like that. Uh, but in theory, and we were supposed to end on like a cool note, in theory, what's going to happen is uh, when you when you show the the package manager, when you show the available packages, there's a ton of packages that you can actually install. So again, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention utilities, uh, authentication utilities. So lots of different things you can install, but for whatever reason, we're having we're running into some weirdness. So interesting. Let's uh, let's check our networking configuration and see if uh, for some reason I want to blame I want to blame Windows 8. But Windows, oh, this is so bad. Windows 8 is just awful. All right, so what's going on? Come on, let's do a IP config slash all, or we did renew, but whatever. And yeah, it looks like we don't have internet access for some reason. So that's really strange and kind of annoying. So what is going on with that? Okay, so we've got the IP address. Um, let me see if I can open it. Yeah, there we go. Windowed mode is way better than the uh, the default interface that we get with uh, with PFSense. So it looks like we had some sort of weirdness going on. I'm not 100% sure what exactly occurred there, but let's try this one more time. We're gonna continue in. I'm gonna log in with my new password. And yes, accept, close. Now let's try this again. I wanted to show you the package manager. So let's see what, what it's, there's nothing currently installed and there we go. So I'm not sure what the issue was there. Maybe PFSense was doing some sort of update in the background. Whatever it was, it was a, a minor sort of temporary thing. Don't hold that against PFSense. Uh, but there's a lot of packages you can install. So Acme, right? We can automatically enroll in certificates. Um, what else do we have here? There's there's DNS server plugins, plugins for cellular cards, uh, free radius, FTP, uh, proxy, so high availability, load balancer. Uh, the list kind of goes on. You're probably getting what I'm like putting, throwing down, right? Uh, Squid, proxy, Nmap. They, they've got um, IDS and IPS things as well. So Snort, I think they have Suricata as well. So just a ton of available a ton of available plugins. So you can really install or, or set up features for almost anything you can think of. So anyway, long story short, with that slight diversion with whatever weirdness was happening with our network, uh, 
PSNS is just really cool. I recommend you install it, just check it out, play around with it because you can do some amazing stuff with it. And I almost always, when I'm virtualizing, especially when I'm doing like security related stuff, playing around with security tools, uh, I almost always set up a PFSense box as the default gateway from the virtual machine environment out to the internet. So at least we can filter the traffic and keep those virtual machines segmented, but still provide some level of internet connectivity. So hopefully that's cool. Hopefully that gives you something to, to play around with. I, I, again, I really like it and I hope you do too.